And any other companies you want to talk about or should we just get into the SEO talk? Uh, we could just get into the SEO talk. All right, let's talk. So I think you wanted to first talk about um, spamming search results and your thoughts about that and how you love doing it, maybe not love doing it anymore. <laughs> so I, you know, when, when I saw search, I saw, you know, dollar signs, opportunity to really make a lot of money. And you know, I'm, I'm really creative with these things. And, you know, one of the first big, big projects I did at a client was we built some automation to deploy about 10,000 local websites for every city that, and the argument for it was if it just brings in one, you know, car donation, you know, per city per year, the project would pay for itself. And it ended up being like a $300,000 project that brought in like maybe like a, a dozen visitors and flopped. And I mean, this was probably 2009, 2008, and these things, these strategies already didn't work then. And, um, you know, I, I just, at the, at the time I thought it was brilliant. And then now, like I got a question last week from someone about buying exact match domain names, um, for different cities that they want to rank in their service area business. And it's just like, I mean, if you really want to rank, open an office in the local market, put someone there at a desk, it'll still be more cost effective and you could actually you know, be legit. But I, it just, you know, whether people think Google has a monopoly or not, the reality is that another search engine is one click away. There is a, a Y Combinator thread that someone shared um, on Twitter a few weeks ago about search results around healthcare um, and how just bad the content, it's all just like really optimized, you know, pages that are ranking well and he couldn't find good information. I had similar experience buying a car at the end of the year. It's just ridiculous. Like even Google's ad results are like cars that aren't available anymore. Right. And I, it just, it, it just, it became really bad. I, I eventually realized that it's, you know, someone looking for another search engine in that result from Y Combinator. And I remember there was probably 20 startups right. attacking search with their angle, their opportunity. I'm not talking about like vertical search engines. I'm talking about like really going after yeah you know, search on some of them. We're not just talking about DuckDuckGo and things like that. And I mean, you have a big player for Microsoft. I mean, right. Unlimited budget. Uh, yeah, exactly. And when you think about the fact that, and discovery is changing too, people are discovering products in other ways. Um, and when you, when you really think about how the world's changing right now, um, it's just these, uh, Google really knows that the user can go to another search engine like that. And I, I think it's a mistake to not realize that a, a competitor is one click away. And yeah. because I, I do agree with you. I mean, people think uh, I'm too Google fanboy and Google thinks I hate Google, just so you know. So yeah. people who are watching this, the SEOs who are watching this are like, he loves Google. He's going to write great things about Google. And Google Googlers who are watching this, they think Barry hates us, only writes his negative stuff about <laughs> us. It's funny because I get the complaints from the Google PR team right. and the Googlers themselves, and I get complaints from certain SEOs all the time about what I write. Can't, can't make anybody happy. It means you're doing a good job, right? I guess. Yeah. Or maybe not. I don't know. But you're right. I mean, I think I always go back to like where Google first launched. They took market share away from all those search. It was like there were 20, but maybe like five good search engines right. back then. FG with budgets. InfoSeek. Alta Vista was very big. They had a lot right. of money. Um, and they took market share away quickly because the results were better. Then it was consolidation. Yahoo kind of stepped up a little bit, Microsoft, so forth. But Google really took over the market share. Um, and, they, and Apple is, can Apple go ahead and beat out, you know? And when Microsoft first launched, I'm like, oh, no, Google has real competitors now because they own the browser. Google didn't have a Chrome browser right. then. They didn't have Android they didn't have anything keeping people on their device. And everybody's like, oh, Google has the market share only because they have Android, only because they have the browser, only because they have Chrome OS. I'm like, well, Microsoft had all that before Google did. Right. And they couldn't compete. So it makes you wonder, like, is there really all this antitrust stuff that Congress and Senate is going after? Is that really because Google doesn't give people a way out? Because it is an easy way out. I mean, you just go to Chrome, open up Chrome, type in Bing. Type in DuckDuckGo. So to, to be fair, I think that logged in Chrome and what they're doing there might cross some some boundaries. Yeah. Um, I think most of the political posturing is just people that just don't understand how it works. 
Yeah. Um, and so I'm fortunate those are the people that have the ability to write legislation and how it impacts these things. But fundamentally, I, I mean, I switched to Google overnight. I remember my, it was my brother email me, check out the search engine. It was just, it was the cleanest, minimalist, like user experience when these other search engines were so crowded. Right. It was hard to find anything. It just removed immense friction. It was like the first time I took an Uber. It was, it was magical. Right. But removing friction is just the key and Google did a great job with it. I think now they're not doing as good of a job as they could be, especially with ads covering most everything above the fold on, on mobile devices and sure. them trying to keep people on search. It used to be, let's get people off the search engine as quickly right. as possible so they're gonna come back. And now they're just trying to answer more and more questions quicker for the user. So I, I think that there's, I mean, honestly, if I was gonna have a gripe against Google about anything, it's one simple thing, which is, them not protecting branded search results because they actually they're killing small businesses by letting competitors bid on their results it's like um they used to not allow that back in the old days they used to not allow you to bid bid on competitors names right so now now they'll let you um uh, they won't let you use a trademark right. maybe you get away with it dynamic keyword insertion maybe right. you get caught uh you could still do other things with uh with typos or things like that i remember um uh, one of the competitors of Angie's List had a really clever ad, which was said, "Don't trust her list." Um, so, like, there's ways around it, but you that. Can, but can you bid on the key, on the name? You could bid you on the, the brand. Text. Yeah, you just right. can't put in the ad text. Right. But bidding on the brand is, I, I totally get it. Especially your B two B, there's not enough demand for your industry yet. Your competitors' keywords, but now Google with their 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 CPA bidding and stuff, they're they're broad matching, exact match industry keywords to competitors' brand names in fields like legal, um, like proper names are now like completely generic keywords uh, as far as the search engines are concerned. So I think that's a protection racket, honestly. Um, I really do. That would be my only real complaint against Google. Interesting. Uh, so flipping back a little bit back to this, the search spam thing, I mean, you're basically saying don't build a business on trying to find a shortcut. You yeah, gotta for, make sure your website is built for the, for the user. Um, that has the best experience because the shortcuts don't work anymore. They used to work, not yeah. 2009 as well. I mean, 2003, 2004, I mean, I was ranking number one for mesothelioma, for h, &R, <laughs> h &R Block's brand name. Right. Basically a one page website, search for h &R Block, click on my website and, and it says, click here to go to h &R Block. It was that easy. And right. All you had to do is like use something like, I don't know, the digital point co-op network for links right. um, and so forth. Um, it was funny because you mentioned the whole uh, city landing page thing. Um, and I actually tested that in the early days and I forgot. I just, I, I basically just put like a subsection of my website just to test to see what happens under zip codes, weather on the pages yeah. and whatever, some data from different data sources. And I get an email from Matt Cutts one day and he's like, mm -hmm. what are you doing? I'm like, what do you mean? What am I doing? He's like, what's this whole section of your website? I'm like, oh, I totally forgot about that. I had it up there. I wasn't mm -hmm. getting any traffic from it because Google's smarter than that. Right. Even like 2006 or whatever it was, Google was smarter than to not rank that garbage. And I completely forgot about it. Well, he's like, my whole team wants to like penalize your website. I'm like, got to do what you got to do it. It was really not, I was right. just testing something to see if Google would even index that stuff. Because right. that's what we did back in the old days. Everything Google we could do, we tested just to see what would happen. Not that I would make money off of it really. Right. I, wouldn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't even have affiliate links on it. It was just to see if Google would actually index it. Um, and that was the, the beauty of SEO in the old days was like, Google didn't really communicate with us. Matt Cutts, Google guy came out a little bit like give us some little nuggets and like right. throw stuff down on a piece of pa uh, paper and then went ahead and penalized a bunch of sites. But it was the beauty of SEOs being so curious about how search works that we just tested everything to the max. Um, and we kind of, I feel like we kind of lost that because there's no reason to like test shortcuts anymore because we know it's not going to work. You got to put your, you got to put money and resources and people on the task or else it's just not going to work. Yeah, so that's interesting that I, I noticed the the lack of testing. The truth is the testing that people try to do today and there's tools for it. I actually think it's flawed, which is they just look at traffic before and after a specific change, but there's way too many other variables um, at play. But I, uh, it didn't occur to me that it was just because people realized that these little tweaks or these ways to outsmart the search engines were not going to work. Um, I. Well, I loved, I'm, there's still a few people that do it, but back in the day, I mean, every Google patent was getting like, yeah. you know, analyzed and, and torn apart. Now, at best you have people looking for changes in the search radar guidelines uh, or the search quality, whatever it's called. Right, yeah. 
those guidelines. So there's some insights there. But I honestly, I think because of machine learning today, I think that the ability to test is kind of gone. And there are some good platforms to test. Um, although, yeah, I mean, there's like, there's a bunch of platforms, so I don't want to like say it doesn't work, but I think most of that's based off of like testing, not like for ranking purposes, more for does this title in the SERPs give me a higher click-through rate than maybe a different one? What drives a better conversion? Um, how do I tweak a little bit more, maybe a little bit more ranking out of something? But again, if, if you don't have the best, it's not Google so much, there's so much more content on the internet now competing for the same keywords that, that you were trying to compete against back in 2005, that it's almost impossible without an amazing website. Um, so it's, it is amazing what has gone on in terms of that. And I definitely agree that spamming is probably not something that's sustainable. And it's not even something that probably is so easy to do, even for like the build it and burn it down and then build it again. Cause there's right. just so much more work than it used to be. It used to be like one page website, throw a bunch of links at it, easy. You, know, you have a website that ranked well for a few months to a year, maybe right. more. Not anymore. So yeah, for the most part, what I see sometimes is still private blog networks um, with um, expired um, or dropped domains, which I thought these things reset mostly. Um, I see them ranking on, on, on Bing sometimes, right. um, and especially in addiction treatment, a couple other industries. Uh, what they'll do is they'll just rack up some leads and then they'll um, try to sell off the asset for a multiple, knowing it's gonna you know, right. tank pretty soon. Interesting. Um, okay, and what about, I know you just want to talk a little bit about reviews.